So for tonight, we have myself, Shea Baird, and Elena Love. And we're going to be talking about five ways to alkalize your body and live a more vibrant life. Um, we're going to introduce ourselves. So I'll start since I just have the mic, which is my name is Shaylin Baird, and I've been a certified colon hydrotherapist in Santa Rosa for the last nine years. And my joke there is that's a lot of poop. So I kind of consider myself the food out girl. Whereas Elaine is a raw chef, so she's the food in girl, and then together we kind of put together this whole picture of pH and how it works in your body and what the result of imbalance in that system can be. So roughly I got into raw foods because I was sick and unhealthy and very young. Western medicine couldn't figure anything out. They said, it, you know, the standard, you're aging, and I'm thinking I'm like 23, I'm not aging yet. It's also the, it's in your mind, it's a lot of those kind of answers. It's nothing you're making it up, but here, take this, substitute, you know, whatever drug for this for every day for the rest of your life. So I did for a while, but I knew there must be a better way. And I also am a, a member of 12-step programs. And in 12-step programs, you get a sponsor. And one of the rules for getting a sponsor is you look for somebody who has what you want, and then you follow that person's advice. So I went through my Rolodex and I was thinking, who's like gonna be my health sponsor? And I had this vibrant, gorgeous, healthy, beautiful girlfriend named Allegra. And if she's watching, hi Allegra, she's in New Zealand now. But she was a raw food, foodist. And I thought, we all thought she was a complete freak. I mean, she brought her own food everywhere she went. She always had like canning jars full of green liquid and you know, that whole thing. And now I just bless her for being the person in my life that walked ahead with the machete and sort of cleared the pathway made it a lot easier for me. And the first thing she did was hand me the book by Richard Anderson, Cleanse and Purify Thyself. It's the accompanying book to the Arise and Shine 28 Day Cleanse. And before I'd finished the book, definitely by the time I'd finished the cleanse, I was convinced that raw food was the way to go. Um, not that I was able to stay, this was in 1999, so it's not like I'd stayed with it perfectly that whole time. I had some really strugg struggling years there. But along my path, I ended up becoming a colon hydrotherapist then a food allergy and sensitivity um, testing consultant. We also have a few other modalities in our office. My partner, Steven, who's at the camera right now, also works in the office. He's a practitioner at this point, too. He's doing colon hydrotherapy as well. And so we've had an opportunity, I have over the last nine years, to really play with people and watch. It's just an experiment. It's just an experiment. There's nothing that's cut in stone. There's nothing that is cut and dry what works for one person and they love it so much that they write a book about it and tell you that this is the way it may not work for you but it's getting out there and starting and seeing what works in your body raw makes sense so however much of that you can tolerate however much of that your tolerance builds up to whether you're eating these foods or that or only fruit or only greens or lots of avocado it doesn't matter just start playing with it and you'll find the balance that works for you um, but I've had the great opportunity of watching lots of people through cleansing and through switching their diet get, get better from a lot of situations. So that's sort of my background. And here's Elena. Tell us your background, Elena. Hi, everybody. Um, actually, our, similar, our stories are quite similar, Shay. I also got into raw foods because of that book, the same book, Cleanse and Purify the Self. I also had a guru that was uh, from New Zealand and lives in New Zealand. And uh, the same, same thing, she was just kind of throwing, here, try some juices, different things. And that was way before I really got into raw, but just kind of, sometimes someone just plants the seed in your mind, and then when you finally find it, you're like, oh yeah, this makes sense. So my story is that I got into raw because I had food allergies, candida, all kinds of things going on in my system, and just got introduced to raw through the, the Cleanse and Purify book. And when I read the book, it totally made sense. It was what I just felt like it was truth in my body. It was what I needed to do. And I never looked back. Just started on the raw path and have just been journeying ever since. And I have a company called Pure Joy Planet where I teach, uh, I do uh, raw food consultations. I do monthly classes. I have a few coming up in the Bay Area. You can look on my website for those. And um, I also do chef certifications. So I teach people how to be a raw food caterer or chef or instructor. So that's kind of my niche, my specialty. And I just love this whole raw food arena, you can call it. Because like Shay said, there's so many different people doing different things. And it's this big experiment, like let's see how, you know, 
these different foods work in our body at different times and everybody has a little bit different story and a little bit different way that their body works. And I also encourage you if you're new to raw to um, not be discouraged if you start going through cleansing and detoxification. That's a big uh, area that I work strongly in as well as helping people to cleanse and detoxify and I think it's really important and it shouldn't be overlooked because uh, sometimes people think oh, I'm going to get into raw foods and everything's going to be rosy and I'm never going to look back. But even Shay and I were talking today, we have our journeys. I'm on a fast right now and, and it's not always easy and you know, your old stuff is still coming out after all these years. I mean, I had a long time to build up all that stuff in my system. I was raised on cow's milk. I was, you know, so depending on everybody's story, some people were raised way healthier than others. Some people just have an easier system, but you know, just give your body a break, give yourself a break. And the biggest thing is don't blame yourself. Don't shame yourself. Have, it, have fun with it. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about different ways to have fun with it, how to make your body more alkaline, how to just make everything easier, hopefully. Okay, so I'm going to hand it back over to Shay. Hi. So I, I want to give a little background on this handout that I gave you. Um, I really sat down and made a bullet point of the talk that we were going to give, and then I found myself filling, like a skeleton, and then I found myself filling in the skeleton, and I realized I don't understand how to do like summaries or bullet points. It was turning into this novel, and it was turning into this like four and five page, and that was just my part, handout. So I decided to just leave it, that I decided to just leave it the bullet points. That way if you want to know more, you have to come talk to us. <laughs> and um, that way we can, we wrote so much, we're being very, um, uh, we're thinking we're gonna get a lot done in this hour. So we're, we're just gonna go kind of quickly through this stuff and then we'll try to have some time for questions at the end. And I'm looking at this audience, there's not a lot of people in this audience who don't know this stuff already, so that's, so sorry, but you came, okay. So, what my part, the first part is understanding pH, what it is and how it works in the body. And I know we're gonna be talking about how to alkalize your body, but for me, I really feel that it's incredibly important to actually understand what pH is, so it's not like you're just memorizing this list of foods and trying to stick to these particular foods without knowing why. So, understanding pH, what it is and how it works in the body. So number one, pH, what does that stand for? So pH stands for, and I've seen several different things, most often I see potential hydrogen, or I see potential of hydrogen, or I've seen power of hydrogen, and I've even seen possible hydrogen. And what, okay, and then the next question is great, but what does that mean, okay? So, and know that I totally oversimplify, but that's just so you can get the picture. So in any molecule, depending on its hydrogen content, its hydrogen content will actually dictate or, or decide, it'll tell you what its pH reading is. And it's not only its hydrogen content, but it's when that molecule interacts with water, how much hydrogen it can release. So that's the power of, or the potential of hydrogen. So we live in a universe where everything is made out of molecules. I like to say that everything that appears to be here is made out of molecules. So that means everything literally has a pH reading, right? So if we have, and we have instruments to do it all. So when people are talking about their garden or their fish tank or their body, it's basically the same idea. Um, so we're looking at a scale, the, how we read that scale, that reading, the pH reading is just on a small scale from zero to 14. I never know whether I should go this way or that. Zero to 14. Zero is as acidic as you can get. Seven is neutral and then 14 is as alkaline as you can get. So hydrogen content in any molecule dictates where something's gonna fall on that scale. Hope that was helpful. Okay, and then how does that work in the body? What does, you know, the fishbowl. So I think in our culture at this point, everyone's sort of familiar with the idea of pH. We may even throw the word around. This is like a really tough crowd to be having this conversation with, because like I said, I know most of you know, but I'm gonna pretend I'm talking to a client. So, we kind of we kind of get the idea of pH from pop culture references, where like something is pH balanced for your skin or hair on a commercial. So we kind of, over time, we've gotten the idea that there's a chemistry like for your hair. And if there's a chemistry for your hair, that implies that there's a wrong chemistry for your hair.